um, Mississippi Freedom Ride 50th anniversary here at the Marriott Mark Marriott Marquis. Mr. Gaithier is here to tell me about what happened on the Freedom Ride, his role in the Freedom Rides, as well as other things. Mr. Gaithier, it's a pleasure oh, thank you. to be with you, thank with you here today. Would you tell me about what happened on the Freedom Rides and what um, what impact did it have on you as a Freedom Ride? Okay, um, my role in the Freedom Rides was not riding the bus and bettering the rest of in Jackson. Uh, I was one of the two persons who uh, came up with the idea for the Freedom Ride in the first place. And fresh out of serving a 30-day uh, sentence on a road gang in South Carolina, uh, I was uh, asked to be the person who would be the scout for the Freedom Rides. Uh, the scout would go down the uh, route that the rides would take and make necessary arrangements for the riders. Uh, we send back information on the layout of bus terminals, make arrangements for contact with local people, make arrangements for meetings with local people, things of uh, that sort. So uh, after the ride started, uh, I was assigned to work here in Jackson. And my responsibilities in Jackson were essentially to be something of a liaison between the local black community and the Jackson Police Department. Because as the riders came in and they were arrested, uh, we had to keep records on how long they were in jail. Uh, typically, riders spent no longer than 39, jail, 39 days in jail. Uh, we had 39 days as a cutoff point because uh, if they stayed beyond that time, they would lose the right to appeal. And we wanted people to participate, but we didn't want them to have a sort of permanent albatross on the record that would prohibit them from federal employment and activities of that sort. Um, I uh, had close working relationships with the people here in the Jackson community. Uh, in fact, Jackson's response to the arrival of the Freedom Riders was uh, engineered by a number of local women who formed an organization that was called Woman Power Unlimited. And Woman Power Unlimited provide for, provided for the courtesies required of the riders when they were uh, released from Archman and we would then dispatch them back to their hometown. So we'd have to find overnight lodging for them, we would have to have food for them, we would have to have a means of getting them to the bus station, train station, the airport. So that's what Woman Power and, uh, Limited was involved in doing. Did you have a chance to go to Parchman or just to my responsibility relative to Parchman was to keep records on how long people had been in jail, uh, make sure that the uh, legal representation for the people was in place, because when people were tried, we had local lawyers with three local lawyers, uh, Jack Young, Carsey Hall, or Jess Brown. And uh, beyond the uh, local lawyers, uh, I sometimes had to coordinate with lawyers who were volunteers from New York who would come in to help. And well, um, Ms. Gaither, um, after all these years, this is the 50th anniversary of the Freedom Riders. How do you feel as far as coming back and reuniting with all of the Freedom Riders? Uh, it's a feeling that is difficult to describe. And it's rather unlike many reunions. Uh, what makes this re reunion unique is that you are sharing uh, a moment with people who have had the same trials and tribulations that you have had. So I think there's a sense of closeness, there's a sense of common purpose that you may not get even in a family reunion, especially if you have family members who have been somewhat alienated or marginalized by a, a dominant part of the family. Well, um, as far as, will you be here the whole week? I will be here the entire week. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, it's been a pleasure and an honor to meet you, Ms. Gaither. And I look forward to, to seeing you again and interviewing you again throughout the week. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome.